If y'all will, come on in and join us. Uh, we're going to sit down. Come on up front. Y'all come on up front, Debbie. 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 Debbie, come on up front. We want, we want all y'all to come up and be cozy like family and stuff. <laughs> Not that far. Sit down, sir. I got this. If I let you sing, you'll be wanting some of my money. I can't do that. <laughs> All right, we are really glad to see this uh, big old crowd tonight. Um, Juan, you want to open us up with a word of prayer? Okay, thank you. Let's go to the word, uh, to the Lord, sorry, in prayer. Father God, thank you for this beautiful evening. We just come before you looking for your instructions for our life, Lord. And the instructions are in your word, the Bible. So this evening we ask you to please speak to us as we're going to worship you by praising you and also by studying your word today. Romans 8, 28. This is just a continuation of show me your glory. Father God, just bless each and every one here in this room. And for those who are still on their way to come, may they hurry up. Father, thank you for always being on time and never late to us, Lord. Even when we are late to you, you are never late to us, Lord. So bless us and give us this beautiful evening worshiping you for your glory. By your grace, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, so I, I put a medley together. Uh, I was telling Aubrey, there's a guy. Aubrey didn't exactly introduce us, but he, he uh, told us about each other to the point where we felt like we needed to meet. But I went up to the Purple Fish Friday night, and Brian Rose and Jim Watson were up there, and they asked me to come up and join them. And I said, well, I don't have anything prepared. And Brian said, well, just sing sing an old hymn or several old hymns and Jim said we'll just get in one key and string a bunch of them together so that's what I did I did it on the fly but it turned out so good I decided I was going to you know send some lyrics to Jonathan and, and do it with y'all and I hope y'all enjoy it um, and I hope you'll stand if you're able we're going to do uh, about two verses of every old hymn you've ever heard Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. A fool to wonder and stray straight is 
a gate and I rode away. And now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. And now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. The Father, Father waits over the way. shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power are you washed in the blood of the Trusting in his grace is our, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bride? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Last one, I promise. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down, I feel like shouting, hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down. Shouting hallelujah since I lay my burden down. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord? By and by, there's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord. In the sky, yes, there's a better. That's all the hymns I know in 10 minutes.
Thank you guys are, are welcome to sing with us now. You can remember the words to it. Been here for uh, quite a few years. Some people come and go. And some hang out with these Israelites and these Hebrew children. But whether you come and go, we're so blessed tonight. To, looks like God's doing the church like he's doing the hospital. Filling us up with them foreigners. Coming from all these other nations. I'm okay with that. To God be the glory. Sweden, Ukraine, Nicaragua, Mexico, Guatemala, across the roof, wherever. God's good, isn't he? Yes. Old theme song of Mechanics Hill Baptist Church. And Debbie's always got suggestions for people to follow. And I couldn't say no. We'll get into that later. That's, that's marriage counseling 202. $85 a session. <laughs> Debbie, I thank God for you and Aubrey. Uh, I learned this song around a piano in one of the most uh, depressing times of my life, working out and working through and working in. Uh, A-L-I-V-E, always live in view of eternity. Biblically speaking, we call it Canaan land. Is just in sight. You do the first I, one. I'll do the first one. If first I one. remember, go ahead. <laughs> Time to leave me, Lucy. Oh, look it. I wouldn't take a thing about it. I mean, change a thing about it. 523. 
That's the way my ministry started. A clock on the wall to remind you we got things to do after church. Can y'all hear me? Keep me in your prayers. We'll start off. I'm not selfish, but I want to take care of this leg. It uh, seems like it's getting a little worse day by day. Prayer. What a joy to have you guys with us. Just a, a blessing. And y'all will be here for about a month. And you're staying with Aubrey and Debbie. You smart. <laughs> y'all pick the best, best. best. <laughs> Look at I've fallen asleep in that house so many a time. My wife, too, actually. So wish she was here tonight. I understand from um, Hewitt that our prayer crossed the water, and most of those folks would have been here tonight. That's our Sunday night crowd. They all left us and went to Puerto Rico. They are having problems with, I think, wash water. Is that right? Running water? Okay. Please, let's, let's make sure that we put them in our prayers to start with. Is that right, Hewitt? He's out there in the hallway. My leg uh, running water for the missionaries. Any of you have anything? Debbie, also remember, we do a grief camp here on this campus. I think it's the first weekend in November. Don't know how old these children are or whatever, but I think from like five or six to 18, we have three groups, and Jesse's wanting me to put the word out where we'll it'd be praying. That's always a great event. And they did a grief camp in India. I think they had 15 families involved. And uh, I'm going to tell you from India, please don't post pictures from India on Facebook. Jonathan reminded me this morning. I don't have that concern because that's not my avenue, but I'm connected. And I probably sent some pictures that possibly got there, but they told us, please don't put pictures from India on Facebook. They can track it down. And you all know what we've been through with Honduras and Nicaragua trying to bypass last time, have to go through the back door. Sometimes that's the way it is. We think we have persecutions here, but there are people in places that has worse persecutions than we have, like the heat and temperature and color of the carpet. You know, sometimes the persecutions get right deep, and they hurt. And that's sarcasm. I don't use it when you go back. It won't work. Somebody else, something else, something on your mind or heart. I'm going to ask Debbie to come up here and uh, pray for us. Anybody else? Jane, thank you for being over at Aubrey and Debbie's and letting them know that our doors were open at 5 o'clock today. Went by the prayer closet and saw a couple in there. And it's a couple here tonight. Wonderful music tonight from a wonderful man. I love you, brother. Debbie, the message tonight is kind of a theme we're going into next year. Last year at this time, we set up Show Me Your Glory. We were dealing with Exodus 33, 18. We took it across the water. And uh, Juan knows we solidified our pharmacy by helping out there some. We started a brand-new radio station, Pescar Ministry, Show Me Your Glory. We uh, built a, a, a new Baptist church, Show Me Your Glory Baptist Church. And hopefully soon we'll have some missionaries from here Go into that church in Honduras. Show me your glory, Baptist Church, sponsored by Mechanicsville Baptist Church. That was our seventh church plant, and we're not making a big deal out of it, but we're keeping here that Mechanicsville has been responsible for seven churches, brand new churches. And we thank you, God, for this missionary who has also been with us to Central America. Um, are you guys all right? Would you all like to say something? Any of you? 
Peter, come on up here and grab the microphone. We're not in a rush. If these people get ready to leave, they leave. They don't. We'd like to know a little bit about you. Yeah. I don't know. How how long do we have it? Take your time. Take your time. Yeah. (laughs) You're you're on this side of the room. Yeah, yeah, sure. (laughs) We are so blessed to be here. And uh, I don't know where to start, but uh, I can, yeah, that is good, all the time. For 22 years, I heard about Debbie. (laughs) I married Natalie in 82, and we met her once. And she told about the wonderful teacher here, from here. And we have talked and talked and talked, and finally we were able to come and visit And you're right, it's a good place to be, Pip's home. Uh, I I can tell you a little from my life, and Natalie will tell a little from her, how important mission work are. Uh, When I was born, my parents didn't take care of me. So I, I spent the first years at an orphanage. And then there was a family, uh, a couple that were pastoring in a church. They couldn't have kids of their own. So they took care of me, and I had a brother and a sister later. Not by blood, but we grew up together. So we were taken care of. And I've seen that my whole life. But on the other hand, I always had some kind of loneliness in my life. Maybe because of the first years. So in my life, things happened during, of course, during teenagers. Uh, the, the father there, sadly he passed away when I was 15. Then there came a new loneliness again. And uh, some year after that, uh, I was struggling, really struggling. Who am God? Who, am, who is God? Why, why is he doing this? I've been to the church, the Sunday school, everything. I knew everything. So it was a little bit out in the world, a little bit in the church. When I was 18, three of my close friends, they died in a car accident in the night. And that was an eye-opener for me. After that, I went to the army. There we had to write what we wanted our family to know if we should be killed. It was not real war, but we had to do all the practice. So that was also an eye opener. And after that, I decided I really need to go for being a Christian 100%, absolutely. But I still had the loneliness and the Lord started to talk to me that you, you need to do something. You, he gave me a possibility to start to help abroad in the Eastern Europe. Uh, I came to orphanages and some of my wonderful, most wonderful meals I spent with orphan kids eating an awful meals. It tasted like, I don't know, S-I-H-I-T, such things. It was awful. But, but it was wonderful time spending with those kids. And uh, the ministry, it grew and grew. And suddenly I had to have a translator because this was in Ukraine. So I asked the teacher, uh, uh, a pastor, do you have someone that can help me? And he said, yeah, I have Natalie. And... Uh, then I got to know Natalie, and uh, we fell in love. And then I got to know that she came from Russia to Ukraine because she should go a Bible school. And at that Bible school, Debbie and Jane were teaching. And they were bonded. I felt that. And because of that, she, after that, she could start working in a church. 
the same church as I was the pastor. So she came from the Bible school to that church, and through that, I met my wife. Just because somebody from here, South Carolina, was supporting. Small pieces, small pieces, but everything comes together. And it's like many times in life, small pieces, it's preparation for the next step, the next step in what God wants to do in our lives. So bless your heart for supporting. It's so valuable. It makes such a difference. And not all the time you get to hear about it. Uh, when I worked uh, ministry in Ukraine, I asked persons, how can we help? What can we do most? And I got an answer that I wasn't really prepared for. Sometimes we are thinking, oh, we need to have more camps. We need to do more. We need to build more toilets. We need to do that. And we need to preach a little more. She just said one word. You're doing it already. Give the kids and the people you meet hope. Yeah. And it's exactly what the Ukrainian people need today as well. They are so strong in their minds, but they need our support in prayer, in all the ways we can, to give them a hope that they will survive. They will, they will make this happen to be a free country again. I will give the microphone to my wife. And uh, we are so happy to be here with you because it feels like home, feels like friends. Yeah, friends in Christ. Sure, Kalsa. Okay, I'll try to be short and uh, just say that I've seen God's faithfulness and goodness through many people like you. And uh, we just love America because of you, because you are. America first, the, the big uh, love of God that comes from here is something beyond understanding. And I can probably can just fastly say that I have got the question often where I, where I come from. It has been always uh, hard to say, to answer, and I, I can just say I'm, I come from evil empire. To recite Ronald Reagan, that was the country I grew up until I was 50, and it's it's what I knew. The only thing I knew, nothing was said about America. There were three icons of Lenin, Marx, and Stalin. That was in uh, our schools everywhere. So I came from communism to know God through many faithful ministers like you. And uh, <coughs> I, I'm still in, in awe and uh, wondering how uh, un unbelievable it is, how sacrificial you are following God's commandments and just obeying him because I'm just a little example of how many people and lives were touched by God's word, by those of you so that sacrificed your time coming to vacation to the former Soviet, to Ukraine, to Russia, to many other countries and just spreading the gospel. It wasn't in vain. And thank you so much for your sacrifices. Thank you for going to Ukraine and teaching the word of God. Teaching the marriage without regrets. We, we still enjoy it in 21 years. Building on the rock. Following the example of the best. And um, digging the truth in here. So God is good and faithful, and thank you for your faithfulness and love. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to stand there. And would you guys come and stand with them? And I'm going to ask Debbie to pray over you guys. And um, maybe some of your needs, if we can help out with anything, let us know. And if you'd pray over the things we suggested. 
You know, I have to say something first. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say a little something about the goodness of God as well. And, uh, uh, today my heart has just been so full. Juan shared the most awesome sermon today. It, please go to First Baptist Facebook and listen to it. It was so powerful, wasn't it, you guys? It was so powerful and so convicting, but it was so full of love. And, you know, I sat there, and I, it was almost too much to take in all at one time. It was just so much to take in. And, um, you know, I, I saw him, I saw my friends here, and I thought, God, how beautiful, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And it's you, and it's you, and it's you, brother, and it's, it's all of us. Like, like Pastor Juan said today, it's all of us. You don't have to be in another country. We could be right here in our own church, right here in our own neighborhood, right here in our own home, and be the feet that bring good news. So um, it was just a powerful, I mean, my heart was just so full. And, um, and just the, like you said about puzzle pieces working together, um, like I say, he said so much that so resonated with my spirit this morning. And, um, and of course, I ha- I've always had a love for Ukraine, but then I was telling Joy after this afternoon, she called, she said, well, what did you think of that sermon today? What did you think of church today? I said, glory is all I can <laughs> say is glory. I said, I'm not texting you. I got to call you. Amen. So uh, I said, this is too much for a text. But uh, but anyway, I was I was telling her, I said, I, I knew I was passionate and love Ukraine. My goodness, I love Ukraine with all my heart. And I love America with all my heart. But one had this passion that I thought, do I really love Ukraine like he even does, and he's never been there. He doesn't know the people, but he loves people. He loves people. And I said, God, and I just prayed, God, give me that passion. Give me that passion that Juan has. And, um, you know, I want to pray like that. I want to love like that. I want to be the feet that brings the good news of Jesus Christ and be real, you know, to people. And um, like I say, the puzzle pieces that kind of fit together, what Juan did with um, Pastor Brian, uh, Brian prayed and Juan interpreted it. And it was so (laughs) precious. It brought me back to when we were in Nicaragua and it was just absolutely precious. And, um, and like I said, I thought, oh, here's my brother representing Nicaragua. I've loved him in Nicaragua since I've been. Here's my, my friends here representing Ukraine. Love, love, love Ukraine. And also, anyway, so I had this thought. I thought, you know, my mind's always ticking, you know. So I thought, okay, okay, well, they're here. They're going to be here a month. Lord, maybe their heart will want to share and do kind of like you and Brian did today. And uh, maybe I can pray and and then, you know, my sweet angel, that's what I call her, my sweet angel. Um, I said, and she can interpret. And I said, and then we can sing the song that Jane and I got commissioned on in the church over there. And mo- many of you probably remember, Michelle, I think you were there. You and Hewitt were there. But, uh, and I said, and we'll get someone to sing that song. And y'all would not believe it. That is the song that our, you, our, our minister of music, and I thought, he has no idea the history of that song, you know, 20-some years ago, but I'd already had in my mind, okay, I I only got, I said, I'm going to pray, my sweet angel's going to interpret, and I have a friend that, and I told her, I said, I have only one other person that I've ever called my angel, he's my hero, but anyway, my angel, and that's that's one of the girls that goes to my church, and she um, does sign language, and it is, when she signs, I mean, it's like an angel, so I felt, okay, I'll have her, Aubrey to sing the song, her, and I've already had all this in my mind. I have Aubrey sing the song, her to do the sign language, and and um, Natalie, you know, and just all that, all, and to do that song. And then when he sang, I mean, he said, we're going to, you know, he didn't say the, the, that song came up. I just about flipped out. I'm not kidding. I said, God, this whole day was so orchestrated. I want that passion. I want that purity. I want what you presented today, Juan. It was just so... Wow. It was just just full. It was just very, very full. So, you know, I appreciate it. And this was just a very small portion of what, you know, God has done and God is doing. And, you know, I'm excited what he is doing in Nicaragua as well as Ukraine. And um, the hope I have, you know, for my brothers and sisters who are so much struggling and so in pain. And I appreciate you, Peter, telling about how grateful. And and this church has been so not just financially given, but heart. I mean, your heart's there. Your heart's there because you love people and you love um, regardless of who they are, what nationality they are, what color they are. 
everybody has a soul. That's what you said. God loves everybody, and we can make a difference in everybody's life. So, so amen. So thank you, guys. You know I love this place. This is part of my heart, of course, you know, for sure, too. So, uh, so I love you guys. Appreciate all you've done for Aubrey and myself, for, um, for our friends, and um, just appreciate my friends. After, yeah, 22 years, I had no idea. Natalie and I, last night, we went to the, to the square for the celebration the fireworks and everything and she was just standing there just looking at it pop out up the red white and blue and peter's eyes i could tell were all getting watery and i just grabbed her and i said can you believe you missed it i said can you believe that this day we are together celebrating our country with the brother and sister that you know love america like i do so uh, and we're praying for our country as well so we just cried together that um you know for such a time as this for such a time as this that they are here and um peter was very blessed by you this morning too on we, we talked about that this morning how how blessed we all were by the power and the passion of your message this morning so amen okay i'll hush now okay <laughs> father god yes lord i'm i'm very humbled to even stand here and just uh just be a part of what's going on in the lives of, of these, all these feet in this, this building that um, are walking to present the, the word of God and to present your truth. And truly how lovely are the feet of those who bring good news, wherever the good news that falls, Father, in our home, in our church, in our neighborhood, in our countries, in other countries, Lord, just give us that passion, Lord, give us that purity of heart that we can feel the passion because if our heart's not pure mm -hmm. and if we don't have a realness in you then we'll never feel it we'll never feel the passion and we'll never never really get what you want us to get in all this and and go because we get to not because we got to but we'll go with the privilege of knowing our desire is to serve you in every little thing we can do and how um i've got a little picture in my bathroom that i look at it sometime and um i just kiss it because it says every little thing we can do to ease his pain then praise god so god anything we can do to ease your pain the pain that you see in our world lord let's just let us do it just let us be faithful servants and be desirous to really want to serve you with our whole heart father i thank you for this church father i thank you how it um, built me in so many ways father and and how it made me want to have that mission's heart and and to um to, to go out and to and to love in my own family as well father and to bring restoration and and so many things in my um, in my church and the everywhere else father but it's a desire to because you want wholeness because you want restoration you want you want forgiveness and you want um you want real you want real and Father, we thank you. I thank you for my brother Frankie, and I just thank you for um, old Rickety Ticket standing by that uh, piano many, many a night by that fireplace and singing um, glories to you, Father, and just giving it to you. And who knew 25 years later, here we'd be serving you. Thank you for this family that I love and that you brought here to America. And Father, you know the steps that that go before them and, and, and they just are, are praying that um, they will hear you. They will hear every step um, that you would have them to take and e every path that you would have them to walk, that they will walk in it, Father God. Not going ahead, not going behind, but just going straight in you. And I think of that song, The Goodness of God, and how it runs, it runs, it runs after us, Father. And I thank you, Father, that the goodness of, of you is, is so running after this beautiful family that I've um, fallen in love with. And, um, and I just thank you that your will will be done in their life, whether it's uh, here in America, um, in Sweden or Ukraine or wherever uh, your heart takes them. I know, Lord, that you're going to use them in a mighty, mighty way. I thank you and I praise you, Father. And I just can't um, thank you enough for loving us and and seeing our worth when we don't see it at all, Father, but you see. You see and you love. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Appreciate you all being here. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take time to look at a scripture tonight. You've probably done your own study, and you could add to this, but they didn't ask you to speak. 
And if you want to, we'll have a, a moment at the end. But I do want you to know this in planning sessions with leadership. This is where we are going for our theme next year, the first three words. And we know. Last year, we're coming out of um, Moses, I want to see your glory. The, the pastor, if you were here in the church the last night of the revival services, I call them. Boy, what, what, hmm. God poured his spirit out in worship during community changes. Stan, I'm so glad you were with us. It was always a joy to see you. And for those salvation experiences, but the pastor touched on it. He didn't dig deep. He, he was ready. I was back there in the back nursing my leg, but I was watching him. I was watching him getting prepared to preach. I said, he's pumped up, man. And when he got up there, he commented on the fact he had done all of his homework, read the devotions, which some of us, myself probably, I guess, put together a year before. Like right now, I started writing devotions for next year, last week. And we know. The five devotions that we know. Knowledge. But he made a comment. Moses requested to see God's glory, and even though it was in the cleft of the rock and it was covering, the intensity of a covering under his wings, 1,500 years later, Moses' prayer was answered on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter at the foot and Elijah and Moses and Jesus on the mountaintop, and the Bible says, and he saw his glory in the only begotten. Isn't that powerful? When you read your Bible, when you know the word, and you're not guessing, you're not plundering, and you watch the word come together. That's what's in my heart tonight with the testimonies, the um, unexpected going back to my past. I didn't go to sleep this afternoon. My naps are precious. I had three text messages this afternoon. Pastor Frankie, can I call you? And they weren't emergencies. I said, I think not. <laughs> I think not. Uh, it was time for me to rest. I mean, if it was an emergency, somebody was dying, they couldn't breathe. But it's just to talk about the same old mess they're always talking about. It's like, ah, come to church. Why don't you fill one of these seats up and you talk to me at church? Amen? Important things are important things. Um, Y'all pray for one. If he happens to visit again, maybe we'll work in some playtime. I'm going to tell a story in just a moment about a bowler. Uh, of someone who was bowling for a living, and that was his career. But one of our pastors said, are you going to take Juan bowling? I said, no, he didn't come to go bowling. And someone told him the other day, said, has Pastor Frankie taken you to the races? You know, have two races. He said, Pastor Frankie, you think I'd go to the race car? And I said, not race car, car race. He said, okay, car races, yeah. You know, when... Central America, you put adjectives behind the noun. You put, you know, who cares, man? Wherever you are, thank God for translator. I don't have to know. I don't want to speak the language. I just want to speak Jesus. I don't want to spend all my time learning the language. So we were going to do a funeral the other afternoon, and we were a mile and a half from the racetrack. I said, roll your window down. I said, roll your window. I said, you just went to the races. He said, What? I said, that's the only way you go into the race. That's all you need to do. Too much up to no good out there. The Bible says in the book of Romans, and if you know much about Romans, time up there says 5.52. I'll try to get you out of here by 6.15. Some of you taking medicine maybe or whatever. Greatest promise in the Bible. Uh, Adrian Rogers called it that. My professor, Bill Blevins, called it that. David Jeremiah called it that. Why call it anything else when you do your homework? The greatest promise in the Bible is Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. I heard my brother here, and I needed to hear that because I've been through some of those times, maybe not as difficult. 
but I got a paragraph here, difficult many times to understand, to keep perspective in this evil world, in the midst of my storms. This verse is an anchor of hope and of truth in our lives. And God will use it in every circumstances. Catch these two phrases. For your good and for his glory. For your good and for his glory. Every time. Now, we're not talking about minutes on a clock. We're not talking about 554. That's what time is. We're talking about eternity's time. Like Moses, 1,500 years later. God's got the economy of time. The man's name was Bill Fong, a professional bowler. This story I recorded uh, 2010, January 18. There were only 21 perfect games in history, three consecutive games, 900 points. After 33 consecutive strikes, he rolled another two. The crowd was wild. Something was wrong. Maybe like, what is Pastor Frankie doing with his cane? He started sweating. He started stumbling. Something happened. I don't know, nerve or whatever in his foot. He started sweating. He was dizzy. Someone went out to the line. Are you okay? He was one roll away from history. Almost perfect, but the number 10 pin started shaking and stood up. Only 899. Wow. Couldn't believe it. He was almost home. He was sick emotionally, physically. Later, he went for a doctor's visit, took him home, checked on him. The doctor said he had a light stroke. He said, but the one thing that saved his life was that the number 10 pin did not fall. <laughs> he said, if the number 10 pin had, a fall, had fallen, this man could not have taken it. Emotionally, he would have been blown apart. And when Bill listened to his doctor, what he thought was the worst thing in the world turned out to be one of his greatest blessings. Bob Mor Rob Morgan, if you don't know him, uh, Daniel Miles, introduce him to me. I've read most of his books. I'm waiting on him to write another one, Red Sea Rules, Jordan River Rules, The Promise. He's got a 10-chapter book on this one verse. I read it three or four years ago. This one verse, he's got 10 chapters. Only one verse. If you remind me, I'll give you that book. It's called The Promise. Rob, Rob Morgan says this. This verse has the ability to changing the way that we think and respond, changing attitude, changing our emotions, changing our outlook. In time, it could transform your personality, alter your circumstance, give you confidence you've never had, a secret of uh, joy. This promise has your name on it, and it's guaranteed to work every time. We don't have to make things complicated. Jesse used to tell me when we were dating, because I came out of this environment, why do you always make things worse than they are? Yeah. And I was thinking, Lord, why don't you tell her? That's my wife, Jesse. Why don't you tell her and you make it simple? I don't know. And since I didn't know, I started working on why do I always look to the negative? Why do I join the crowd in finding fault with people? Why do I sit around a table and it's easy to see the negative? And I started working on that, and she noticed the difference. So I'm thinking there's been a big difference since we met about not getting into the naysaying, joy stealers, bore the bullies, faith stealers, and I'd rather be with the ones like I heard tonight. It doesn't matter what you go through. God's working to work it out for your good and for his glory. I really believe that's what this uh, short lesson is all about. So let's break it apart where it can put us together. That's my phrase. Let's break it apart where it can put us together. Once we break it apart, it'll put us together. Our phrase is when you unravel the word of God, it'll sew you up. It'll make it. So here's the first part. And we know. I believe the best word to put there is the promise is definite. It's not a suggestion. It's not an idea because when you start struggling, well, I don't know. I'm talking with a friend right now. Pray for him. That's his favorite phrase. I don't know. I, I don't know. Why are we? I, I don't know. This thing is so hard. I don't know. Well, it was hard for Jesus. You know, life can be difficult at times. Peter, thank you. But he has a way, doesn't he, of finding an angel and putting him in your life. 
He did that for me. Hallelujah. I could testify all night. The pain is real, and we know. What you know is very important. In the Bible, if you take a Strong's Concordance, which I did over a thousand times, I think if something is mentioned in the Bible a thousand times, it must be important. It must be important if the Bible is going to mention a thousand times, we know, we know, we know, and we know. So what I'd like to say about that, it's not only a definite, you don't have to go see a counselor sometime. You might not even have to take medication. You may just need to trust God with your knowledge. And I know. And I know. Notice the verse does not start with all things. That's where I used to start the verse. I think it was six months ago, Jess and I were studying Romans together, husband and wife. And she brought this up. Why do we start this verse, all things work together? She said, we forgot the first three words. That's where I got that phrase from, from her. And we know. And if you take that and you break it down with these parts and you look at everything in the scripture, I'm looking forward to next year getting my T-shirt at Community Changes and putting devotions together and hearing young people. And we know, do you know that you're saved? I can see the woman at the well as one of these devotions when Jesus looked at her and said, if you only knew, if you know. If you only know him. So be praying about this. Uh, this is kind of a, a, I guess you would call it an overview. God has a plan, and he's working it for our eternal purpose. Amen? And I've just put these notes together, so if they get mixed up, I might get them out of order. Let's look at the second part. The promise is divine. You're working, but God's doing the work. Let him do the work. Get out of the way. Have you ever found out what, how good God works when you take your hands off? When you take your hands off of it, God will work it out. Let it go. Your church is going through something. Uh, my church knows that I'm working with several churches who are working through something. Back up. I used to think I had to have a pair of boxing gloves to fight the devil. Until I studied the book of James, it says resist the devil. Come on, I want to fight him. I want to get my text messages. I want to get my Facebook stuff together. I want to get on the phone. I want to fight this enemy. Let it go. He has already lost. The battle's over for him. All he's dealing with is time. Somebody needs to say amen. His, his time is short. So the second part of this is not only it's definite, it's divine. Even if we don't see it, God is working. I put even in your child's death, we've heard of death here of child, my child's death. Even our tragedies, our situations, somehow God is working for our eternal good. For our eternal good. Um, if you don't believe it, if you ever have a son that dies like mine, it's going to hurt. But to talk with people who have children in nursing homes or health care institutions who didn't die. And they're being fed through tubes every day. They can't see. They can't hear. They can't speak. And fathers and mothers and grandparents go hold their hands. They pray to something that looks like a corpse. Be careful. Death may not be the worst thing that you have to go through. God, God can work anything out for your good and for his glory because I had to see that to believe it myself. Energetically, he's working. Unceasingly, he is working. Purposefully, he's working on our behalf. Isaiah 64 verse 4 says, Since the world began, no ear has heard, no eyes have seen a God like you, O oh God, who works for those who wait for him. Um, seems like waiting is, is tough on us, especially in North America. I can't speak from where you guys are from. It, it, it's difficult for you guys, too. Only one book, only one book. Oh, man, missionary. Come on, man. <laughs> Wait till we open the next box. Can you have patience enough to let's see what else is in these supplies? One of our pastors ordered two books. And we had about seven boxes Tracy had packed up for us. And we opened the first book, and we pulled the first box, and we opened one book. And the second book was in the next box stand. And he said, only one book? I said, yeah, come on, man. Wait till we open the next box. God, yeah, be thankful. Even if it's only one book, be, be thankful for it. Sometimes even in mission work, you can see this stuff happening up. 
the, the divine promise is that he's doing it for your good, for our good, and for his glory. Practice waiting. Number three, not only is definite, not only is it divine, God is doing the work. All things. Um, in the Greek, um, the little phrase there is panantas. Ah, you know what panantas is? Pandora's box. What's in Pandora's box? I don't know, man. Surprise. Could be anything in the world. That's, that's the phrase used there. I think it's interesting. We translate it into English, all things. Panantas, panantas. God is not outside of our situation. He's not outside of our circumstances. This is an all-encompassing statement. In fact, I looked up the word all in Greek. You don't want to know what it means? All. All means all. <laughs> it means everything. Anything that you go through, from a heartache to a, a heart attack to a hangnail to a headache to a, a leg, as Aubrey said, do you know what's going on? Not yet, but we're going to find out. We're going to have fun finding out. I don't know if we're going to have fun, <laughs> but we're going to find out because all things work together, even this leg. You know, this leg, it's okay. He, he, he'll work it out. All things, all things means all things. No restrictions, no conditions. If you look in your Bible, if you had the chapter 8 open, which is a beautiful chapter. Chapter 8, it could take a whole year for a pastor, Juan, to preach. You could read chapter 8. And the whole chapter. It could take you all year to preach that one chapter. It's right in the middle, and it's your systematic theology chapter in the book. In verse 17, he says, suffering. Verse 23, groanings. All the negative of life. I was feeling sad. Yesterday, I went to Friday night. I went to a wedding. I didn't want to take this cane. I don't think I'm vain, but I knew I couldn't walk. It was like a, it looked like a football field, man, from where we parked to that chapel. It wasn't that far. But then I saw three other guys with canes. I said, man, I'm right at home. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's amazing what God puts around you. What are you talking about? I went upstairs the other night. And I, could, I said, oh, Lord, I hope I can make it through the worship service. I took me some ibuprofen, and Jesse said, be careful. You might fall over because of too much ibuprofen. You know, <laughs> the medicine is worse than the disease sometimes. But I finally got down and plopped down in the chair, and I checked my brace, and it was on my leg. And I, my knuckles on my hand hit the man's leg next to me. I said, gosh, he got a brace too. And I said, what is your name? And he told me, I think it was Brian. I don't know him. He's, I've seen him here at church a time. So I'll probably get to know him if he hangs around long enough because I'm not going anywhere. I think I'm going to hang on. And he pulled his leg pants up. He ain't had no leg. He said, it's prosthetic. He said, man, my little brace, my little brace is nothing. This guy's walking on a prosthesis and he can't even tell it. So I think sometimes, young or old, if we look at things in the proper perspective, we'll see this all things is, is, is definitive. He, he puts things and people around us. I didn't have any idea I'd sing an old song tonight. I didn't have any idea I'd meet someone from Sweden. Ukraine and like, wow, man, what a joy. And my friend being here tonight, it's awesome. All, th all things work together. God's in control, amen? The verse does not say sickness and suffering are good things. Be careful. The verse never says sickness and suffering and a weak leg are good things. What the verse says is that God will ultimately bring good out of evil. What looks bad, he will bring good. So faith is in God's goodness, not in things. Be careful about putting your faith in things. Look at number four. Number four says the idea is dynamic. The promise is dynamic. Uh, what was that character on TV? Dynamite. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was him, Aubrey. Uh, it's amazing, uh, dunamis, dunamis in the New Testament, when you start thinking about uh, the word dynamite, uh, dynamic is, is the word dunamis, but this word used here, working together, the promise is dynamic, together for good, together for good, the idea is sooner 
Geo, Sonagao, Sonagao, G-E-O. When I took Greek, yeah, Sonagao. And our word is synergism. When you think of the word synergism, working together. Uh, you, you've seen a braided rope. One strand is kind of weak, but when you work things together, loneliness was present because of death, suffering, and event, Thanos. Angel comes along, translator, you know. Oh, what's she doing here? You know, in my life, it was all women are trouble. So when you go through this time of a no more marriage, no more liking women, mama's the only woman in the world, you know. But then you go to a restaurant one day, and this lady you're working with said, well, you like to have pizza. And she got her hair poofed up. And you've been going through this sad time for about a year and a half, two years, Birch. And you walk in, and here's a little green dress on a little young lady with her hair poofed up, and you say, Mama Mia, what's wrong with me, man? My leg's getting weak <laughs> at far different rates. Listen to me. You run into a financial problem. You, you run into a sickness problem. The, the, the Bible says right here that he'll take care of it. It's definite. It's definitive it's, if it's all things. And, and what he's saying in this part, number four, is this dynamic. It works together. What happened yesterday works together. When we went down to Georgetown, God had those people ready to sow in your ministry. We didn't go down there to pick a gift up, did we? We didn't go to that funeral to pick a gift up. God already had people in place working things out. The music tonight, the message tonight. The people who are here, no matter how tired we are, no matter how we may feel and what's on the schedule, and we know, we know that God is working this out together. The promises is dynamic. Sodium and chlorine are gases. When you put them together, what do you get? Come on, scientists. Salt. Oil and water will not mix. But when you put an egg with it, what happens? Mayonnaise. You got it? Mayonnaise. Thank God for mayonnaise. But if you separate the ingredients, it doesn't work together. You think right now of your life, the losses, the deaths, no matter what your age. Look at how God has brought things together. He, he, he makes the assignment. He gives the intention. And he brings them together. Illness death of a child, whatever. That is not to say everything works out perfect. You're not hearing what the word says. But God will take everything that happens in your life and work it ultimately for your good. God is putting the puzzle pieces together. I promise you I'm not quoting what you said. This was written down two months ago. We heard this same phrase tonight. This is work of Holy Spirit. Y'all want to see this? If you don't believe me as a preacher just making stuff up, God is putting puzzle pieces together, and he is working them out for our good and for his purpose. Thank you, Peter. Even if you travel, how many miles to Ukraine? How many miles to Ukraine? More than 100? Well, it's 14,000 to India where the thing. Y'all find that out. I think that was very important. And y'all need to find out and let me know before we leave here. Juan will probably tell me. Let's look at the fifth one. Not only is it dynamic, not only is it definitive, it's divine, and not only is it definite, the last one on here is that the, um, the promise is defined. Defined? 5,280 miles. Wow. 5,280 miles. Amen. Man, you come back next week. <laughs> Listen to me. When I was, um, I was about seven years old, I was underneath the pickup truck with Daddy. Gosh, I got two minutes left. I'm Y'all listen fast. Um, 
And I remember my dad telling me to go get an open end ridge, 916. Kind of a big assignment for a seven year old. I brought back a, a pipe wrench, Aubrey, Phillips screwdriver. I didn't have a box in 916 then. My dad loved me so much, and he liked Bert. Bert's a good teacher. You ever worked with Bert? Bert's a good teacher. My dad stopped what he was doing, went down to the barn, went to the picnic table, pulled his toolbox out. He laid three or four screwdrivers up, different sizes. He laid wrenches up, open end wrenches. He, he put box end wrenches on the table. And he said, see these measurements on here, these numbers? Yes, sir. I was afraid because my daddy could be grumpy. Mama was always tasteful. When I spilled milk, we sang Jesus Loves Me. If daddy was there by himself, I got my tail cut. <laughs> it was like the S word you use. It's like, yeah, like that. Daddy made it tough. But I want to tell you something. I love both of them. And both of them taught me and trained me how to define things. And this is where the church is falling weak. Tomorrow, I hope I get a definitive measurement. I want to clarify this word on this leg. Jesse said, if it's muscles, let's go with the muscular people. If it's nerve endings, let's go with the people who deal with nerves. And she said, don't be running your mouth about mission trips and stuff like that. You go in and you listen. I got 45 minutes to spend with you, and I got to go back and do a counseling session. So you be quiet. Tell the doctor what he asked, and let's don't ramble on and on about stuff. Can you believe that woman? And here's what she said, because I want to know. Thank you, Michelle. I want to know what's wrong with my husband. I want it defined. That was her word. So th this is the killer in this verse. We're going to define the promise. There is no promise without these two things. You're just hanging in the air, and this is what tears us up. The promise is to define two categories, to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So I'm just going to clarify this. Those who love him, they apply this in the way they live. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 8, 3, if anyone loves God, this means that he knows them, and he, they keep his commandments. The book of John's filled with that. You love God, you're going to keep his commandments. You love God, you're going to do what he says. This is talking about walking in fellowship with the Lord. Loving God is your condition of the promise. We don't like conditions. We don't like consequences. We live in a community and a land, don't give me any consequences, no conditions. Mm -mm. My wife works at the hospital, and when I go down fishing at the beach, uh, she'll always call me about middle ways a week. Don't you bring any boo-boos back. You put gloves on when you're cleaning those fish. I have to work around sick people. I don't want any germs getting into my life, and I don't like that, but you know what? I have found out it makes me extra cautious getting into the boat. If I'm going to get out walking on the oyster shells, Aubrey, I put shoes on. I use precaution. I believe if you love someone like that and you honor their requests and wishes, how much more with God? He's got a Bible full of rules, regulations, laws that are so full of grace. Turn the other cheek. Walk the second mile. Forgive one another. Let it go. Might be something in here tonight that you need to let go of. So just let, let it go. So those who love him, that's the first condition. Here's the second one. Those who are called into salvation experiences, that's his purpose. Our incidents are not accidents. Wow. Wasn't an accident you guys came tonight. Wasn't an accident that Jane Gunner said, we have a service. We have a service at 5 o'clock. It wasn't an accident that the man who owned the construction company said, what does he need? You really want to know? Yeah, I want to help you. Wow. Everywhere we go and everything we do, there's a purpose that God is working through to, for our good and for his glory. 
for his glory, for your good. Um, let him have his plan. So I'm going to leave you with three things, and I'll have to give my wife partly credit for this last page. This is three things we need to do. And um, try to get this in your bloodstream, in your mindset. Not only believing in God, but believing God. Did you hear that? Not only believing in God, but believing God. I had a talk last night about a man who was looking over a wedding scene, and he said, our world's gone to pot. Our people don't want to be in the church anymore. And they got a worldly way of doing all the celebrations. I said, it's not about the church. They don't even believe in God. They don't talk about God. And I believe this is the way we end this lesson tonight. Three things. Be determined to trust God. Trust him with everything. Trust him in everything. Especially in everything. Trust God. The will of God. The Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. If you want to know the will of God, do what the kingdom's about and you'll know the will. You sit back and say, what is the will of God for my life? I, I just do it. When you start doing what the Bible says, you will understand what his will is. You have to start doing it. That's not your salvation, but that's the result of your salvation. So trust God. And by trusting him, you wait on him by being involved and getting involved with that synergism. Number two, be determined to thank God. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Even when we don't understand, we can be thankful, not just for the good things. I've been writing down my Red Seas, my Jordan River rules, mine, not the Bible. But I read them in there. But he's parted some Red Seas for me. You know, with my children, he's doing a great work in both my boys' life. And I thought it was maybe something I had done. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> no, 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 no. He's doing it. I, I, I need to be obedient, and I need to trust him in everything, but let him do it. He'll do it, one he one. He'll do it. I was at Wanda's house today having lunch and watching her walk on that leg. He, that, that gives me a lot of hope. She can get through it. I can get through it. Manna always falls from heaven, and heaven always wins. Heaven's going to win no matter what. You just trust the Lord. So I said to trust God and to thank God. And the last thing, John Piper gave us this phrase, be determined to test God. Now, God's going to never tempt you. God, God's going to never put you through a trial of temptation. But he will put you through a trial of testing. might be filling the blanks. It might be multiple choice. But I promise you, he's going to continue to give you tests to see what you're made out of. Uh, when you squeeze a lemon, you get lemon juice. And when he squeezes you, he wants to see Christianity. It might be at the stop sign tomorrow. It might be somebody driving. It might be an irritation that you're going through right now. Uh, but test God. He'll test you. But I, my prayer is that we, we pass the test. John Piper says that when you live life inside of Romans 8, 28, that you will be as strong as and tall as Mount Everest. Nothing will ever blow you over. When I put Mama Emily down, I got some of her stories. This promise allows you to put God to the test. Your death, your depressions, welcome to the test, God. He is true. You hold on. This morning, I had an altar call after the altar call. Um, I've been praying for three children down the road. And I didn't realize they were here at church. Sometimes I, the kids grow up, and I don't recognize them. You know, I got cataract surgery, and I can see a way off, but I have to use the glasses to read up close. And, they, gosh, it must have been 14 or 15. Half the church left, didn't they? Um, Jonathan said we still had about 90 folks. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Had a lot of folks going, but the church is stable. Church is strong. But I saw I wanted to speak to one of the leaders because he touched base with my uh, great nephew with community changes. And my uh, family member, Christian, said, make sure you speak to him. 
tell him thank you for what he meant to my son. So I not only touched base with him, he said, get me his phone number, and I did that this afternoon. Y'all call him Fonny. I think his name is Everett. Thank you, thank you. I'm learning, learning. And we had a good little visit, and then I was going, I saw my wife walk by the hall like, hey, if you're going to speak to me, you better get your tail, I mean, you better come on out. Well, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sure. Forgiven. Anyway, I was wanting to tell her bye. Because for I get hugs from church people all the time, but I don't get about three a week from her. And all of them are precious ones. She's not a hugger, I am. I said, Oh, I gotta I gotta see that woman before I leave. But this family came up to me and they had their three grandchildren with them. And we sat down at the table. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And I sat down on that table, and those three kids got in front of me, told me what they were doing, where they were. We're going to be coming to Bible school, and I had heard that they can't come back to this church. And I went, wow. Family concerns, different ideas. And they stood right in front of me, and I said, can I anoint y'all and pray for y'all? And the oldest one said, I'm waiting on it, preacher. <laughs> I'm waiting on it, preacher. And I walked out of here like I was on a cloud. When I went by you and Sheila, it was like, man, that was my revival. Don't, don't get upset and disturbed by things right now in your life that you want them to work in a different way. Thank him, trust him, test him, and he will prove himself faithful. Because all things, and we know all things, work together for good to those who love God and call according to his purpose. I took 10 of your minutes away. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gathering tonight. It meant a lot to me as I got these little notebook pages preparing for next year. The theme, cross the water here, and we know. And there are a lot of things we need to know, your attributes, your character, Bible stories. And we know, would you teach me first? Train me. Help me not to teach and preach something I haven't first experienced. I don't need to preach somebody else's sermon. And all of this right here, you have caused to happen in my life. Death, divorce, depression, disease, dysfunctional family, all things. Financial stress on. May we go away from here tonight knowing that the medley of songs, the testimonies from other nations, this precious family you have sent us, Debbie and Aubrey, sent back to us. 15, 20 people gathered in a little huddle like a covey of quail. The Bible lesson tonight. I pray that someone has learned not necessarily something new, but something that can be used by your grace and for your glory to expand your kingdom. Thank you for the book of Romans. Or chapter 8 of Romans, but especially that little verse that snuggled away, number 28. May we claim it, write it in the palm of our hand, put it in our shoes, put it on the wall, work by it, worship by it, walk by it, win by it, because we know that you're the victor. Go with us in our activities this week. Be with the missionaries who are traveling. Give them the water they need. And this week, as our pastor is out, Help us to stay attuned to hospital visits, stay in touch with one another. Uh, we pray for Troy and others whose family members are across the water. Uh, visit them, be with them, and we depart by your love to go tell the world about Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.